Okay, so the first thing we need to do is just turn it around and suction it to table with this little lever here. So that's what we need to do. So just push that down and then it won't move and pull out our two sides like that. Alright, and what we need to do for our reverse masking technique is we need to cut out a circle. Okay, so we're just going to do that out a bit of A4 printing paper. So what we need is our base mat A and on the dies it tells you what mats to use. So this is a thick paper die so then we need our thick paper cutting mat, mat which is right here. Right so all we need to do is place our circle on top and then our paper on top of that and then a mat on top of that and pop it through. Now it should be really easy if it's really difficult wind it back and just check that you've got the right stack here. Okay. Sometimes um, because it's cutting very thin paper the blade will just stick into the board a little bit so I like just to get like a paper piercing tool or something just under that little blade just to prise it off gently off the cutting mat. There we go. Okay, so there's a little circle cut out there. Okay, and this is the part we want to use, not this part. Right. So what we're going to need next is an A5 card folded and scored in half and our mask. And what we need to do is just put a bit of non-permanent tape around the edges. That's going to help it stick to the card. Okay, so there it's stuck down nicely where we want it. And the next thing we're going to do is get our ink. So I might just pop that card up there so you can see it while I'm doing it. Alright, so we're going to use first of all Spice Marmalade Distress Ink, which is right here, and an ink blending tool. And you're just going to work all around that circle and work a little bit more around the edges just to give it a little bit more depth around the outside of your circle. And you always work off the page and work towards it so you don't get clumpy marks of ink all over it. So working it all the way around. Okay, the next thing we need to do is to stamp our flower and we're going to use Peel Paint Distress Ink. So just smooch the ink pad on your stamp when you're doing it and it just helps release the ink and then just a light tap all over. And then just centre that in the middle of your circle. Okay, and then it just looks like that and then we just peel that off. And because that's non-permanent tape it won't stick to your, to your card. So there we go. Okay the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to stamp and then cut around your tag. Um, if you find it difficult to say stamp in the centre of an image, sometimes it's easiest to stamp first and then cut it out after. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do now. Alright, so we just need our little friend stamp and our um, peel paint distress ink again. Ink that up. Alright, now the next thing we'll do, now normally that will go cutting side up and we pop that over and put our mat on top but I can't see where I've placed it so if we turn the whole thing around and then oh, there we 
it's stuck to the bottom. And then what we can do is place it over our word so then we can see it. So it's okay to do it upside down as long as your stack is in the correct order. So I'll just pop that right over the center of the word. Pop our base mat on top. Then pop that through. Gently peel that off. All right, so there we have it. It's stuck right in there. But this is a cut and emboss, so we want to emboss around it. So we're just going to leave it on the mat like it was. But we're going to put our little floppy rubber mat on top and our embossing pad on top of that. And pop that through. Just gently peel it off. And there you go. And I don't know. You can see the embossed impression around the outside of it. Hopefully, you can see that. Okay. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is pop in um, some embellishments out of our aged copper kit. And I just need two little paper fasteners. And the easiest way to apply that to any cardstock I find is using our paper piercer. So all we need to do is line it up on the strip. Okay, like that. Just centre it along there and pop the paper piercer through that. Just be careful because it's very sharp. And then the other side. There you go. Alright, but before we apply that to the card, I just would like to go around the edges of the card. So, like this in the peel paint and the ink blending tool. You can just leave it like that, but I just like to give it a little bit of depth around the outside and then close it in. So, again, just a scrap little piece of paper, the bit that I had before will be fine. And then, and just work your way all the way around and a little bit more on the corners. So all we need to do now is pop the tag across the bottom. So that's what that looks like. And to do that we'll just pop a little bit of super tape across it. Okay, and that's the finished card. Now the difference with the two cards, the one I made earlier I did on plain A5 white card and this one I did on textured card. I don't know if you can sort of see the difference there. Not a great deal of difference. They're both really good for blending on and also with the first card I used the number six circle and on this one I use a number seven circle just to show you the difference in sizes and how they can look a little bit different using different size circles. If you'd like to purchase any of the products seen today, you can contact me through my blog. Or if you'd like to see some more tutorials, or become a consultant, or even have a workshop or a free party, it's at www.simonekazazzconsultant.blogspot.com. Thanks for watching my video.